My neighbor was going to throw out this Bose Wave radio because the CD player was skipping. She gave it to me because she knew I liked playing with broken electronic stuff. When the player is first plugged in and you try to select between auxiliary, CD, or radio, the player attempts to switch to your selection but then resets and your selection is not made. After you press a button, the display goes dim and it flashes the please wait message as if it was just plugged in. You are not able to switch to the radio and hear it play or switch to CD and insert a disc. I will leave the player plugged in for a few minutes and come back. After a couple of minutes, the uh, Bose radio will start to respond to the uh, uh, selectors. Now I can turn on the FM radio. And I can change over to AUX and it stays. And I can change over to CD and it's probably looking for a disc. Put a disc in. But the CD still is not working. FM radio is working. CD is not working. So um, I will wait five more minutes. Okay, it's been about five more minutes and we can um, try the, the CD. It switches over to the CD. It's looking for a disc. Slide the disc inside. Now it's actually reading the disc. It wasn't doing that before. But you can see that it's uh, skipping. I change tracks. Okay, so if I keep the radio on for a half an hour or an hour, then the CD player will start to play a little bit better, but it, it's definitely a temperature-related issue. So uh, turning it off here. I uh, took the radio apart to expose the uh, circuit boards and um, from what I have seen on other websites uh, these uh, surface mount electrolytic capacitors are uh, suspect. Oops, sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, it looks like Bose has used quite a few um, surface mount electrolytic capac capacitors. Now, um, I received this radio from a neighbor who was throwing it out. Uh, they have had it plugged in, you know, for 15 years, 24-7. So, you know, I think these caps are probably at the end of their life. Even if these were high quality caps, that would be a stress, but um, I think what I would like to do is take a few measurements 
with a uh, ESR meter. Okay. So this is a ESR meter, which ESR stands for equivalent series resistance. Basically, it will send a 100 kilohertz signal across a capacitor and measure what the resistance is of that capacitor. Um, I'm going to start at some of these 47 microfarad, and I'm really more concerned about the ESR value, not the capacitance. Uh, this particular cap is measuring about 44, but it has an equivalent series resistance of 12. Should be about one or two. This 47 microfarad is measuring about 47 and it has an ESR of 1.5. So this actually looks like a good cap. Uh, this is a 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, which is measuring 10, but ESR of 38, which is really, really high. Here's another 47. It's measuring 44, but the ESR is 14. Uh, I'm going to be replacing most of these filter caps with a through-hole, a high-quality Panasonic low ESR cap. And you can see what this will measure. So this measure is about 51. Uh, I'm just losing the connection, it's okay. It's measuring about 51 with the ESR of 1.5. So I'm going to recap the majority of these capacitors with through hole high quality caps and we'll see where it goes. Okay, I want to show you how I have been removing the capacitors. Uh, first I tried with one soldering iron going back and forth, and, and then I tried two soldering irons trying to heat both elements at the same time. Uh, but it's, it's very difficult to get the cap out. Um, you need a whole lot of heat. Uh, so what I'm doing now, I'm twisting the capacitor with a, a pair of pliers. It looks barbaric, but it does work. So I'm going to pinch the cap, start twisting, just kind of gently. What you don't want to do is rip it up, which would pull up traces. Um, but you want to break the wires on the bottom of the cap itself. If you keep twisting, you will exceed the tensile strength of the wire and it will snap. It takes uh, quite a few twists. And once you get one of the wires broken off, then you go the other direction up and down. Almost there. Almost, yep, I think uh, one of the wires broke. Now I'm going to go up and down like that. Like I said, it looks barbaric. Um, however, now the little bottom spacer comes off. You can measure the capacitor. It's still intact. And what you want to do is you want, whoops, sorry. You want to clean the pads off. The, the, the existing uh, lead of the capacitor is still stuck on there. You just clean it off like that. Little solder sucker. Like that. And you're ready for soldering the um, through hole capacitor on the leads and that's it. it it's take your time it, it's a delicate operation but it's 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 safe thanks I just uh, finished putting all of the capacitors 
into the uh, the Bose radio. Um, let me focus. I ended up using Nietzsche Khan through hole capacitors, uh, the PW series. Uh, they have a, a low ESR value and uh, they had the uh, sizes that I wanted. Um, most importantly, uh, small package sizes. Um, this is not my my best work by by far, but um, it's really tough um, putting in capacitors through hole capacitors where um, surface mounts used to be. Um, uh, th there are many height restriction issues because a CD player will be placed right on top of this unit. Um, Anyway, if I were to do this over again, I would probably uh, try my hand with the uh, surface mount components and see if I could get that working. Anyway, um, uh, one thing that really helped me out was having my uh, laptop here that would um, show me where the components that I took out, where, where they go back in. And I will uh, post this picture. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in there. Uh, I will post this at the bottom of the uh, uh, the video. Okay. Well, the next, the last thing to do is to try it out and see if it works. Uh, while I have the camera still here, um, I wanted to point out that. When soldering these capacitors, uh, there are some little baby vias. Uh, it's it's hard to point them out, but small little baby through holes next to the leads that will connect uh, the top of the trace on the circuit board down to either the bottom of the board or if 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 it's a multi-layer board, um, it will connect traces to the center of the board uh, but it's so easy to mess up and uh, let me see if I can focus it would be so easy to um, solder bridge a blob of solder um, touching the lead of the capacitor over to one of these little baby vias little circle so um, it, it, this is definitely not a, a project that a, a beginner would want to attempt um, but whoever would want to try this out you really have to watch your soldering I, I have been using a microscope and double checking my work after each um, each component anyway um, uh, good luck there that's horrible filming I need a better camera Okay, let me focus. The um, radio is pretty much put back together, except for the top cover. I'm going to plug it in for the very first time after replacing all of the caps. Alright, so there's no smoke, which is so far so good. If you remember when I would switch between auxiliary and radio. Wow, right off the bat, radio is working, which is amazing. Uh, let me change auxiliary. Before, let me focus. Before, uh, when it was turned on cold, you wouldn't be able to switch between auxiliary, CD, and radio. Um, it would reset right away it would you would have to wait for about 10 minutes before it would actually stick all right so now the moment of truth let's try a cd a little nervous because it was so much work replacing all of those caps let's see if the cd can play without skipping oh sweet 
Well, it's a Christmas miracle, folks. It's playing beautifully smooth. Wow. Let's change tracks. If I know how to do it. Well, it real it looks like it's working. It looks like replacing those capacitors fixed the problem. Um, the heat related problem causing the player to uh, reset in the beginning when it's cold and then made the CD player skip. I had already cleaned the CD, um, the lens, but that didn't solve the problem. Replacing the capacitors solved the problem. This is really fantastic. Alright guys, uh, it looks like it's working, so I'm going to stop this here. CD stopped, CD ejected, wow, uh, every cap that I replaced were, was probably not, they were not all bad, but um, I'm going to have it listed at the bottom of this video, every cap that I replaced, what the capacitance was in circuit and out of circuit, along with the ESR values. All right, uh, hopefully this helps someone else out, um, and uh, uh, good luck. Take care. This is the microprocessor board that also controls the CD player. I replaced every electrolytic cap on this board. In the picture, I show the capacitance and ESR value when measured in circuit and out of circuit. This is the main board that contains the power supply, radio tuner, and amplifier. I replaced many of the electrolytic caps on this board, but not all. The two large filter caps measured good, so they were not touched. There are also a lot of 0.47 microfarad caps that all measured around the same, which I labeled on one of them in the drawing. There was also a non-polarized 2.2 microfarad that measured okay. I also skipped replacing the 220 microfarad caps under the large heatsink. They measured good enough. Uh, they are used as coupling caps for the external line out jacks, which I will probably never use. Uh, if you attempt this project, uh, please keep in mind the height of the caps so they do not interfere with the CD player that lays on top. All right, uh, good luck and th thanks a lot for watching.